Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number 9, focusing on the A note. Get ready and some coffee, because you know Phil keeps telling me, you're not showing the best trade secret guitar techniques because you're scared of being ostracized. Then I'm writing code about this kind of thing. I could be ostracized. It's like, whatever, Phil. I ain't scared of no ostrich, no matter the size. I ain't scared of you. I mean, what, 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 is some ostrich trying to size me up? Oh, look. They're starting to fight. They're just surfing, sizing each other up. Yeah, it's like, just because, just because birds are descended from dinosaurs, some ostrich now thinks he's like, he's like a, like a T-Rex or something? Come on, Frazier, we gotta hit him, hit him first! Threatening to ostracize me, I don't think so, bird. Huh? I don't think so. You know, I, I, I don't care if some skinny neck flightless excuse for a fowl's talking crap about ostracizing me, Phil. Wait, what, what, what's an ostrich gonna do anyways, huh? Huh? I mean, it doesn't even have any teeth. Be scared of being ostracized. It's ridiculous. You know, That's ridiculous. The, the, the dang bird probably gets tired just drinking water for crying out loud. Because, because drinking causes the ostrich's poor Adam's apple to run so many long laps around its lanky neck. I mean, how, how do you make an ostrich strain from exhaustion? You give it a drink of water. That's all you have to do. You just give it a drink of water for crying out loud. Scared of being ostracized. Whatever, Phil. You know, I'm giving out the super trade secret guitar playing classified insider info right here, right now. So let's do this. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate us. So let's go back to that first tab to get a general overview. We've been looking at the C major scale and related modes. Started looking at it in open position defined for us as frets 0 through 3. Remembering that this E represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. Funnest way to map out all the notes in open position is to make the chords from the scale that we are working in starting with the one chord that being the c major chord which we mapped out and discussed in detail we then went to the four chord in open position because it also has a major chord construction mapped it out discussed it in detail same with the five chord then we went back to the two chord because it has a minor chord construction as does the three chord the six chord then the seven chord that we mapped out which has a diminished chord construction if we were to map out all the notes of all the chords we would basically be mapping out all of the notes in the C major scale and related modes which would look something like the blue notes here in open position we then want to jump up to the middle of the guitar learning it not first in terms of chord shapes but rather in terms of scale shapes pentatonic and major scales and then seeing how we can tie that into the chords that we learned in open position so we discussed it in detail and then we discussed it in relation to each note in the scale that we're working on c major and related modes we did a similar thing jumping then up to the seventh fret the next position talking about it in a similar way looking at the pentatonic and major scale and then uh, looking at each note uh, in specific relation to that scale and how we can connect it to the open position and position fret five and now we're continuing on with that discussion this time starting on the fret 9 position and we looked at the pentatonic the major scale and and now we're looking at each note that is in our c major scale which is basically kind of looking at the different modes and we are now on the concentration of the sixth note which is going to be the uh, a and that will construct or build a minor chord that we're going to be focused in on so what do all the colors mean well, this is the fretboard. This E represents the low or heavy string. So that's going to be the one at the top of the guitar, the one closest to the ceiling here. And then we have all of the colors, all the white notes are the ones we're staying away from. Those are the ones that are outside of 
the uh, C major scale and related modes. So that's the lava that we typically don't touch unless there's a reason. And sometimes there's a reason. Sometimes we go to the lava. <laughs> and, but then we can imagine the down at the bottom, we have all of the notes in our scale, C major and related mode. That's seven out of the 12 notes in the musical alphabet. And you can imagine all the colored notes having blue at the bottom. Then we put on top of that the, the green notes, which are the pentatonic five notes out of the seven note, which is a scale that fits well when we talk about the C, as well as the sixth, which is basically the minor. So the pentatonic five notes obviously fits perfectly inside of the seven note scale, but also because now we're on the sixth and we're building a minor, uh, an A minor, then the three notes that construct the sixth, basically playing in a minor mode or Aeolian mode, also fit perfectly both inside of the five note pentatonic as well as the seven note major. So if you think in terms of pentatonics, then this one, the major and the minor fit beautifully. Any other mode that we look at, we typically have to make adjustments to it because we have to add the critical notes of the four or the seven when we build off of the of those of those notes, for example. All right, and then we have these chunks that are breaking out the fretboard. I'll also note that that, that that's going to be th then within side here we've got on top the green notes, and then on top of that we have the one that's going to be our major point of focus, the light green, and then the three that's going to be our second most important note which is the third in relation to this A. And then we have the yellow, which is going to be the fifth, uh, which is our third most important note to focus in on. So all the notes are good, but the most important notes that we're focused on to zoom around is the, the light green, and then the red, and then the yellow, and then the dark green, and then finally the blue. <laughs> all right, and so then we have these shapes that are giving us the different breakouts of our neck so that we can play everything. We should be able to play everything within these shapes in terms of all of our chords and all of our notes, but we'd also want to be able to move fluidly between the shapes. This first shape, we can call it a C shape because, and when we name these shapes, remember this is a little confusing because we're focusing in on the A as our targeting point here, but usually we're going to be thinking about the related major when we label these uh, chord positions, these shapes. So we could call it just generically position number four, or you can try to name it to its related major typically is how it works. So we're on the sixth, the sixth note, which if I was to play around that note would be a minor scale. We're not going to talk about it in terms of minor right now, although the minor is almost as popular in, in, of course, Western music as the major. So if people are playing in minor, they're probably going to switch, of course, the numbering system around and make this the one. Uh, but we're going to keep with our idea here of playing around the six, just like we did with every other mode. So we can more easily see that connection. And we'll talk about the modes uh, more in detail in terms of modes in future presentations. So we're gonna basically play around that six. So when I think about this shape, we could name it by the related major, which is the C. And if I build a C, that's gonna fit into the shape. Now, remember that this C is representing three notes and the shape, if it was a pentatonic shape, it would still fit into the five note pentatonic shape in a unique way. But when you have seven notes that you're talking about, then this C shape could fit in other uh, positions. So whatever naming convention that you use, you kind of have to keep that straight uh, in your mind. So that would be the C, but we're focused on the A here. So the A would, of course, be in open position, an A minor, that is, this shape here. That's being outlined by the dark blue, which is a little bit hard to see, but it's difficult to put all these colors on there. So there is our shape. Boom, 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 boom. Now, over here, it's on the outside. It's on the outside here because the ones on the left are going to be on the outside, and then the ones that are leaning forward are going to be inside. So the purple, which is the next shape, is inside. So if we go from position four or the C position, 
to position number five or the A position. This A is not tied to the A that we're looking at here, but the relate relative major up here. So in other words, if I shift around this C and I made a C chord going forward, it would be this C and then these notes down here, which I'm, I'm not focused on because we're focused on the A, but it would look something like that, which would be an A shaped C major. But we're focused, of course, on uh, the A. So within uh, the A position, we can see that we had before this shape. So we had this string and this string. So there's our A right here, and we could reach that A up to here. So now we have uh, this shape with the purple here, boom, boom, boom. And that's a little bit tricky of a shape to see a lot of times, and sometimes people don't finger that shape as much. We would call that, you can call that a, a, G, uh, a G minor shaped A minor. And the reason for that is because if it was a G, here's a G position that's a G major. And uh, if I was to move that up here and play that G major here, it would look like this. And if I was to try to play each half of it, this would be the major shape like this. The bottom half would be that. How do I make it into a minor shape? We drop this finger, the third, and we get to that. So this would be like a, so now I've, I'm lifting this finger up. So right, so it would be those three. So that would be, so we could call that a, uh, <laughs> a G minor shaped A minor, if you wanna call it that. Uh, we also have uh, this shape within here, if I grab these two and this one. So we have uh, this, let me put that on the outside. Da, da. Oh, what happened? K pos. Oh, I'm going to cut. I did it again. What is your problem, man? I don't know. My fingers. Okay, so here, so we have this. Boom, boom, boom. So we can play that uh, little shape in that position as well. And then we have these three. Uh, down here so we can play these three in that position which is kind of in between okay so then if we go to the next shape which is going to be I would call it position one you might call it a G shaped and we're going back to the C major the related major that's what people name the shape based on and that's because if I find this C I have this G shape boom 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 so it would look like that, or if I played it, that's this major G shape here now. So that would be a G shaped C major, but I'm looking at the A's again. So we saw that this is one of our pivot points for the A where my pinky is. So that's gonna be boom right here in this shape. So if it's on the top string, then I've got my classic uh, bar chord. So you might double this finger to kind of press, put the pressure on it boom 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 this here 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 you can call this an e minor shaped a minor because if it was in open position it would be these two so if you pushed that up here we have that so that would be duh, 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 this 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 and the purple is on i mean the red is on the inside here and now the red is on the outside here as it overlaps uh to the next position this position by the way you might play like this sometimes uh, is a nice comfortable way that I'll often play it. And then you have these three down here. So then we go from the position one to what I would call position two. You might call it an E-shaped position. Why is it an E-shaped position for some people's terminology? Because if I go back to the related major, then you can grab this C uh, up top. And if I lean that forward, you get this bar uh, shape. So if I build a major chord from that C, I get a bar, boom, uh, boom, 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 which is, you can call that an E. That would be an E major shape because it would look like that up to here. So now you have a E major shaped uh, C major. But we, once again, are uh, looking at the minors here. Uh, so we, we were on uh, this shape. So we had uh, this minor shape bar dun, dun. and so now we have uh, this a right here and if we lean that forward where did my this one here it is right there and if we lean that forward we've got a d shaped 
So it's going to be this note, the, the, the orange is inside here, now the orange is outside, the orange is outside, and here's the orange right here. So it would be this shape, which is, it's just, you could call that a D minor shaped A minor. You might see it more clearly like this, just playing uh, these uh, three notes going boom, 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 because that looks more like a D minor shape uh, when you put it back into open position. But if you play the full shape, it would look like that. So you can reach back to that A. Okay. And then we're going from uh, position two to the position we're working on, position three, which some people would call a D position, because if I go back to the related major, a C, that's what they're naming the convention on. There's the C. If I lean forward from this C uh, here, leaning forward to this, to this, 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 this is our little triangle D shape. But if I lean that back, then we get this, this, and this. There's gonna be our shape, but we're looking at uh, the A. So within here on the A, we're back to the octave. So that open string is an A, and then here's uh, an A right here. So one way that you might play this A is like this. You can grab this top bit, or you might lean it back like this. So you've got this, this, and this. Now you might call that shape a C minor, a C minor shaped A minor. Why is that? Again, it's a little confusing, but if you took your C position up here, it would look like that. And if I move that up to here, it would look like that, meaning I got my finger uh, here. The third would be here, and then there's the fifth, right? Uh, so, but I want to I want to bring this finger back to flatten it. So now I can say, okay, I have to switch this to my pinky and bring that finger back to flatten it, and then I've got to reach back to uh, to this finger because I had my finger on another A, so I had to reach back to this finger. So that's a little bit confusing to see it as a C, but it is basically a C minor. It's a C minor uh, shaped A minor. And then you can also have that top bit because sometimes when you play the C like this, you grab the top bit, which is the fifth above it. And that's why you get this shape, boom, 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 which is kind of part of that same shape, which is more comfortable to play oftentimes. And then the bottom part of that shape is going to be here where you've got duh, duh, duh. And so that's a fairly uh, comfortable shape uh, to play as well. Okay, so those are going to be uh, the colors. Our strategy, remember that every each of these positions, we should be able to play everything in each of these positions because I should be able to play all the chords and all the notes in each uh, of those positions. That's the beauty of uh, the fretboard, but we're only mapping out one like chord at a time within the position so we'll kind of map out how some things you might practice in open position maybe uh, talk about that more but it's likely that that most people know their open chords a lot better than their their chord shapes up top and the chord shapes they know up top are usually the leaning forward shapes right uh, because those the, the ones that are built on the first two strings and the lean forward so but in any case uh, well, so what we're going to do is basically say could one strategy we can do is we can go from the open position to the chords we know and then jump up to our position up here so we can noodle around the thing that we're trying to noodle around while still jumping back to, <laughs> to notes that we know uh, in open position. So that's one strategy we can use to kind of focus in a new shape in the dusty part of the guitar and, uh, and, and noodle around that. The other strategy we could use is we could, of course, try to blend our shapes together. Here's what we're working on this shape and then try to blend from the prior shape, you know, into the current shape that we're basically working in on following our fingers and trying to find smooth lines. And we could, of course, go back to the prior shape from that, the prior shape from that, the prior shape from that and use uh, that strategy. So we will do uh, we will do that as well. Now, remember that our, our normal strategy here is like if we were playing, if we were trying to practice the A minor in relation to the scale that we know, which is a C major, we might just put it in the mix so we can say like here's a C, there's an A minor, there's an E minor, and then go back to the C. 
but we probably want to practice if we're focused on the A minor and how it works, we might want to make it the center, make it the tonic, which means we're going to play around the sixth, making it the center, basically starting and stopping on the sixth. Now, it's going to be natural for most people to say, well, that's that means it's an A minor. You should make it a minor or Aeolian mode. Uh, and you can totally do that because the minor mode is so common. But we're, it's also useful to see it as another mode. That's all it is, is another mode. All these things are kind of tied together modally. Even the major scale can be derived from the other modes. It's just basically another mode it's just usually the home base in in western music so we still want to so i still want to think of it basically as though we're playing around the sixth and thinking about all of our shapes and chords the same but making the sixth the tonic and we'll talk about the modes including the minor mode and aeolian and looking at it that way which would just basically making the sixth the one everything else basically the same uh in a future presentation so, so, so now if we were to do that, of course, we just start on an A minor. Back to an A minor. It's not too difficult to make the A minor sound like home, for, especially for most Western music people, because it's a, common, uh, it's a common mode to play in. But we could still use that same trick, which you will always see, even in the minor mode, even when you're playing any minor, because we don't have the leading tone going back home as we do with the major. So you can kind of cheat. You could say, well, here's my E right there. There's the fifth that I can try to lead back home. If I was to make an E out of the scale I'm in, it would be an E minor like that to lead home. But it might lead home a little bit more if I, if I then add the major. So now I'm gonna add that note playing an E major. And you'll hear that oftentimes. So if I'm playing around in a minor, here's an A minor, C, G, and then I'm going to go to the E minor, and I'm going to add the, I'm going to add it to the major. So now I'm on the major. I just put this finger down, and that gives you kind of more of a leading tone uh, to go to go back home. And that's basically because this this note right here is resolving up to this note. So that's just something that we can always do anytime you're playing the minor to get the best of both worlds to, for it to be like a, a minor sound, but also get that leading tone home. All right, so if I go back up to this area, then then we can again map out the 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 chords uh, that we that we have here. Well, let's first just get our ear around the the sound of a minor uh, a minor. So what would we do there? We can play our scale. But this time I'm going to stop and start start on the A, which is the sixth. But instead of making it the one, which is what we would do if I thought of myself in A minor, I'm going to keep it as the sixth. And I'm just going to go from six to six, right? So I'm going to go copy, copy. And then I'm just going to go from here to here and try to name that out in my mind. So I'm not starting my plane up on the D. I'm going to start it down. I'm going to start it down here on an A. So if we do this, we'll be able, if we do this with all the different modes, starting and stopping on the note, then we'll not only get the shape down in our mind quite well, but we'll be able to play something different because we're playing around different modes, right? So I'm going to start on this A and I'm going to call it number six, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I'm on this one down here. So that's our six, and then I'll play it up to uh, the F and then back. So I'm gonna say, this is gonna be six, seven, eight, uh, or one, uh, two, three, four. So now I'm on this F, which is four, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six. And that gets us back down to here. And then I'm gonna keep on playing that down to here. So then I'm gonna go, okay. Six, five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six. So now I'm on this A, and then I'm gonna play it all the way down to the F and then back up again so we can practice the whole scale even though we're starting kind of in the middle of it. So I'm gonna say 
six, five, four, three, two. So now I'm down to, to the D. I started, I went down, not to the F, to the D. And then I'm gonna say, two, three, four, five, six. And so then we ended up right there, okay? So now we, so now we kind of get the, the scale in our mind. So the next thing uh, that we can do is just map out these shapes again. So we have this shape, boom, boom, boom. So if I start on this one, you might say, you might try to lean forward. The natural thing to do is to make a bar chord whenever you make these uh, shapes, which is to lean forward is what I would call. But you also can lean back typically. So we're trying to lean back here into our shape. So we're, we're leaning back from this A and the third for a minor third is gonna be that C and then here's uh, the E. So once again, that's kind of a C minor shaped A minor. It's a little bit uncomfortable to play like that, but not too bad. It's a little bit easier to play the bottom of the shape here, which is gonna be boom, boom, boom. So if I take my pinky up right here and instead put my ring finger down here, now I've got this C, uh, E, and A. This has everything for an A minor, but the A is on the bottom, so it is inverted. And I can kind of uh, mute this finger. So I can go from there and then lift up my ring finger and reach up to this pinky up to here. Right, so. So I can play basically those uh, two shapes. And then, and so, and then up top, it's kind of comfortable to play this shape, which is on the top three strings, and that's gonna be the fifth is above it, and then the third is down here. So that's somewhat comfortable to play like that. And then also realize that this A is the octave. So you could play, that sounds funny, because I'm playing the open A way over here, because it's a full different octave away, it's all the way down there, but you have it, you're still playing basically an A minor. So you can kind of mess with that open A even though we're way up top here and it sounds a little bit out of whack given the fact that the distance between uh, the, the notes, but just it's useful to note that that open A is there as a bass note as you go up and down the guitar. All right, so now that the notes that we've learned, just to kind of go over them, we've kind of, we've gone over basically these uh, chords. You might look at it like in terms of the major chords first that we've looked at. So if I look at this C, the C was here, and then we had this, boom, boom. So if you wanted to kind of throw that into the mix, play an A and then go to this C. And we did that, and then we know that the, the one, four, five is this way. So you've got the C, the one underneath it is the four, and then the five is over here. You always have that kind of L shape. So one, four, five, so the F is right here. So we could reach from this F up top. That would be the top half of like a G-shaped uh, F major. The bottom half would be like down here that we would have. And then if we go from that F to this G, we have basically an A-shaped G, which would look uh, something like this. And so there's our G, and then if we go back up to the minors, we saw that we had uh, the D, which is basically up top. That's gonna be boom, boom. So we have this shape here, uh, D minor. That full bar is kinda hard to play, so you could play like these three, which would be this, this, and this on uh, the D, and then we had the E, which is basically up top. And so uh, if, we, if we grab that E, we've got like that G, G minor shaped E minor that we can play basically up top there. And then we also said that if you wanted to convert that to a major to lead it back, because that's the fifth of the A, you can just take this finger and move it up, which leads you into the, 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 the leading tone for the A minor that we'll be talking about. So you can take that E minor, change it to an E major, 
and then go to the A minor. So those are the chords we can look at, but we're only really mapping out one chord in this position, and that's going to be the uh, A minor. So let's do our other strategy of moving up, jumping from here up to, uh, up to what we want to play in the current position. So let's pick, an, pick a note. So if I say I'm going to play around that A, and then I'm just going to jump up there and kind of noodle around that A. So we might first say, well, what do I have around that A? So we can say, okay, I have this box again. So, duh, duh. And so I know I have like this box, but now I'm going to try to make this A what I'm going to be focused on. So double stops. I could slide up to that F right there. And I know that these two columns like I say, are completely fair game all the way across. So once I get to, I can play everything down from there. Can play everything down from there. And I might end it off on this is an easy shape to end it off on, or this. So I've got. So this is an easy, the, the most important note is probably going to be, uh, the, well, hold on a second, is probably going to be the, 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 the minor or the third, uh, which is going to be this note, that C right there is probably the most important to give you kind of the flavor of the minor. So the easiest way, you know, you could reach that just this way to get that third in there. Okay, so let's say we jumped back here and we said we're going to play an A minor. So you might just play it and then jump up in here and say A minor. Double stop, double stop, hammer on, A minor, A, A, A minor, so A minor, maybe to a C. So, so then, of course, we can go below here and focus more of our attention below. And if we go below that A, then now I can keep on going on this A, but now I have this shape, which is double stop, double stop, double stop. So I've got this whole little uh, shape here, and then I can reach up basically to this A uh, down below. So then these two are going to be my most important notes, the C and then uh, this A, that A, uh, I mean, sorry, the E down here. The E's nice because that allows me to reach up to that full chord right there. And then the C is nice because it allows me to reach that A and it allows me to reach the fifth above it for a full chord as well. And then I can be double stopping. So let's try that. So I'm going to say, OK, let's go from an A. And then I'm going to play my A here and then double stop. And then A minor, 
to a C to an A. C, maybe an E minor, A minor. something like that we could say okay what if I went down to this a down below so if I go to that a down below then above it once again I have my I have uh, this little shape so if I'm on this a so I could go from that a above to above and end it on this shape is going to be this C, E, and the A, or I could go down below, remember the symmetry of these shapes, boom, 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 double stop, double stop, double stop, and then down here, you've got boom, 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 this way, double stop, double, double stop, and then also these two whole columns are good to go, so you can think about it as these two columns, and then you got this little extension on the two sides over here, right, so I've got my A, I can go down here, Double stop, double stop, double stop. And then. And then I could go to this way. So if I play this triangle, I might convert it to this to get the heavier A on top so it's not inverted. So we got down here. like that right so if I played an A back here I could jump up to this A right here double stop play this A and that E, that's a power chord. C, E minor, A. C, A minor, I mean E minor, A minor. C, F major, B minor, A minor. C, E minor, B major, A minor. So, so we can do something like that. And then of course we can go to the prior uh, shapes. So I could say, okay, what if I want to end off on this a over here possibly playing something like this and then match tie that into my prior shape which is in uh the e area so within uh, the e area we've got this a shape which is leaning forward from here so here you've got this is a d shape so that's going to be this this one this one this one uh and this one so that's our D-shaped. You might see it down like this way because that's going to be just the D that we finger in open position. So, so if I'm here, then I can say, okay, where's my pointer finger? My pointer finger is going to be right there, of course, and I could try to noodle around in this box. So I've got this basically this box that I'm going to lead in from this shape into possibly getting my pointer finger on that C, which I can then point up this way so I get these three up top, right? So I can say, okay, well, if I'm starting over here on uh, this A minor, and, 
And by the way, sometimes people have a hard time grabbing this pinky. If you don't grab that pinky, you can play just these and then just mute. You can just mute this string and then put the pinky down when you get to when, you, when you're feeling it. All right, so so if I have that, I've got you know the double stop, double stop, double stop. So you've got an interesting just double stops all the way through this area. So we've got. going backwards so you could do anything within within this little this little chunks the the two things are nice and chunked together for for one finger And so then, of course, we could we could do the same thing. Instead of heading up top to this shape, we could head into this shape here, or or into uh, the shape where we're going E, C, and uh, E. Uh, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. We're going E, C, and A. So. Let's move it back. We're running long on time here. Let's say we go from this uh, orange. So now we're going to go back to the red, where it's probably our favorite position for an A minor. By the way, A minor is a very common uh, uh, thing to play because it's in a guitar, because it fits you know, right in the middle of the guitar here, and you get this open A. So now I've got this open bar chord which is great. So that's going to be this whole bar chord here. And then we have this here. And then if I was to piece that out, I can play it this way, which is going to be that C, D, D, which is kind of easy to play. So let's start with the full bar chord and do our normal kind of thing and say, okay, what I can move my pointer finger here is the easiest thing to move. And then if I, if I was to move it up, I would be getting into this position uh, up top so I can move it up to basically get my pointer finger here and then move back down to pull out this shape. So if I wanted to stay up in this register and the low register, I could do this shape up top. I've got my double stops here, double stops here to here. around you know right and so you, and then we could say okay what if I was trying to get from this higher register down basically to maybe this A down here. So maybe I want to get from here down to this A and then turn this forward to get into this little range that we did before. So then I can kind of noodle around from up top in my favorite shape here, right? This is most people's favorite shape for position one. That puts me now into this shape. So now I just slid into this shape, which gives me my the same problem I had before. All right, and then we can noodle around in there somewhere. If you start on this shape, meaning I'm gonna start it playing this way in open position, this and then this and this, now you've got an interesting flow of not maybe going from your pointer finger, but but these uh, these fingers, you can kind of uh, possibly move up, although you're in this upper position here, like these two. So you could move like 
these two fingers together from here, our coffee's done, to here to here, right? So I could have my fingers. back one so now we went from the G let's go to uh, the A shaped so now we have our our A here that's leading up to this A so we could lean that back like this so that's gonna be this A this uh, C and uh, then this E that's not the most comfortable kind of A shape and we haven't practiced this shape five too too much so let's just kind of take this shape and see how can I move it into shape number one. So I can say, all right, well, my pointer finger, uh, did I make another one? My pointer finger would be right there. So I can say there's my pointer finger. And so I can move that up to here and maybe slide that up into my position number one here. So if I was playing something like this, I've got, here's my, point, my pointer finger. So I can, so I just slid it up into this A so that I can then play my, uh, into this G so that I can move it down to here and play my normal A. Then I'm sliding it up to this position so I can play my D minor shaped A and then, and then just sliding it up to the next position. So we can follow that finger uh, in that way if we, if we played it like that. And then let's just go to the full position. So if I was playing my A over here, the normal shape would be my A shape like this. Boom, 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 boom. This one is open. So again, where's my ring finger if I was to play it in open position or my pointer finger? It's on the C now down below. So if it's on that C, then I could say, okay, well, I know I can move that up to this position and then possibly to this position in my shapes, right? So I could say, all right, if I'm just going to be down here, I can take that finger. I know I have a buzz on that string. I need to fix it, but I have it. Double stops in that position, and then I can move it from that position up into this position, which I know pretty well. So I can say, all right, let's go from here. I have these three notes, which is an A. Uh, I, I can just say, okay, I know I have these three, and I, now I'm focused on that A below, which has this inverted A minor. And then I can take my C, my fingers right on that C, convert it to this one. So now I'm doing my A minor this way. C, boom, boom, moving this way, and then I can try to get around to this A by slight take, I'm gonna look at this finger and say, how can I get that up to this A so it's pointing forward. Slide it up, boom. So now I'm in this position. So now I'm in this A looking forward. There's the power cord right here to pick that one up. And again, now I've got my pointer finger here so I can go boom, boom, boom on these to get it up into like that to that C basically. So now I'm in here, I can go. And then there's my reach up to these three basically up top. All right, so there's just some patterns on, on the A. Now remember with these open strings, I really like to play these shuffle patterns and just play with those open strings. So we can do this pattern with the A, which is quite fun, I think, which is like you, you, pull, you hold down this E and the open A, and then go from the E to the C, and then I'm gonna move up to the next one, holding down the F, going from the F to the D, alternating between A, open A and D, and then going from there 
to the G and then alternating from open A to the E and then uh, going to the next one, which is going to be the A, alternating from the A, double A, to the F, and then go to the next one, which is going to be a B, alternating between open A and G, and then go to the next one, which is going to be a C, alternating between open A and A, and then you can kind of end it off right there. So let's just kind of, and then also just in this open position, the note behind it is the blue note, so that's useful to know. So if you're... You can play that, and I can lift my finger, and I can lift my finger up. Hold on, I'm playing this note. The note behind it right there is the blue note. And then I can lift my finger up and also pull up that D, get that D. So I can play here, the blue note, and lift my finger up. So that would be this... Right, as I'm playing the A. And reach this one above it. So now I'm gonna, re I'm gonna throw this one in, reach it above it, so now. And then I'm gonna go to the next one up, which is gonna be this E, and then reach up to that D. So I'm alternating between double string. I grab that G and the D, and then I'm going to go up here, and so now I'm going to go duh. I'm going to grab this one. So now I'm, I'm grabbing those two, and then I go up to here, and now I've got the double stop on the A. So I can go. So that's two A's, because this one is an A open and an A here, and then I can grab that F. And sometimes it's fun right here to grab this C above it and let go. And then I mute it when I let go. You also have the fifth right down below it. So this is kind of a, a nice spot to be because then you, you have those double stop A's. So, so that's kind of like your midpoint. And then you can go up to here, to here, to do it. And so now we're going to go... And then finally to here. Duh. And then. And then I can end it off with this boom, boom, boom. And then you can go back the other way, right? So if I, so that's fun way to just get your strings going horizontal here.